He was widely considered one of the Republicans' best hopes for winning back the White House in 2012. That is, until he said, no thanks. I sat down with Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels at his office in the state capitol. He says he could have beaten President Obama, but it was his family that vetoed the run. Daniels says he has no regrets, and the first question I asked him was about the process of making a very personal and difficult decision. Oh, it was almost surrealistic. I mean, um, I think it takes a certain amount of presumption to think of yourself in those terms, and I never had, hadn't thought of running for president. Um, but uh, I felt some sense, uh, sense of responsibility to people who thought we had something to offer, and, uh, and I hope I didn't let, uh, let them down. So you're not doing it, but do you think somebody else can beat Barack Obama in this Republican field? Absolutely, I do. So who do you think have a good chance? I wouldn't rule out anybody that's, that's out there talking about it right now, but uh, certainly among those who are most discussed, Mitt Romney, Tim Pawlenty, John Huntsman, these are really talented people uh, with a lot to offer the country. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most vulnerable, how vulnerable is Barack Obama? Oh, I think he's toward the upper end of the range, 7, 8, I don't know how to calibrate. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the, clearly their economic policies uh, have failed. The debts that are coming really are of terrifying uh, dimension. When you were considering running, uh, you took on your own party. And uh, at a conservative convention in Washington in February, I'm sure you remember it, you talked about the kind of pitfalls of purity in politics. Purity and martyrdom is for suicide bombers. King Pyrrhus is remembered, but his nation disappeared. I, for one, have no interest in standing in the wreckage of our republic saying, I told you so, or you should have done it my way. In a way, were you calling for a truce on social issues uh, which tends to divide voters and while you pay attention to the more pressing financial problems? I did at the national level. Right. I, I uh, said that uh, um, maybe as a matter of priority we ought to just agree to disagree for a little while. I likened it to a, to a, a threat to the national security, which it literally is, and said that if a, a foreign army uh, you know, came to right. one of the borders, we'd all uh, put aside our other disagreements for a while and uh, join arms as Americans to, to repel it. And I think that the uh, danger that we, have, that we are facing is every bit as severe as, as some of those uh, uh, military threats we've, pa we've faced before. Daniels was George W. Bush's budget chief, and they called him the blade. In Indiana, he's turned a state deficit into an $800 million surplus, irking some conservatives by raising sales and cigarette taxes. And if he were still in Washington, taxes, as in tax reform, would be on the table. Well, let me talk about the Republican budget proposal, because as you know very well, it takes on Medicare, but it doesn't do anything on the tax side. Here's what I uh, think about taxes. We need a lot more tax revenue revenue, dollars in hand, um, we'll only get them if we have a period of strong growth. The question is, how could you change the tax system uh, to make it more pro-growth and more pro-jobs? And we all know what the answer is. Wipe out a lot of the preferences, which incidentally tend to favor upper income people, and uh, uh, lower the rates, make a, a lower, flatter tax system that um, with far fewer distortions of economic activity. You know, people That's who are what always... the Deficit Commission suggested. Yeah, and I think and there are... And some Republicans, yeah. including Paul Ryan, did not sign on to that. Yeah. We go about $10 trillion deeper in the hole. Ryan is a Daniels friend and protege, but Daniels has a different formula and isn't shy about saying that Ryan did not go far enough. I think Congressman Ryan's made a tremendous uh, contribution, and uh, nobody should criticize his plan unless they've something of similar uh, dimension of their own to offer up. But uh, his plan's not perfect. It didn't mention Social Security, and that has to be, we have to have a new Social Security system for the, for the future, for the next generation. He didn't mention defense. And um, while defense is, is a non-negotiable, the, the physical safety of Americans must always be protected with, a, with, a, with assurance. I personally would have preferred to see a, a, an even more pro-growth approach to taxes, one that has lower and flatter rates, and um, uh, therefore, uh, by, by creating a lot of 
of, of new economic activity would create the revenues we need to pay down our debts. Um, but on balance, it's still the best plan out there. But the cheap shots on Medicare were going to happen, and uh, uh, we have to have that debate. I personally believe that uh, it demeans the American public to say that we are so juvenile um, uh, or so dim-witted as a people that we cannot see an economic iceberg that's right ahead of us. Uh, the American people, uh, we ought to give them more credit than that. But our polls show, when you, when you look at the Ryan budget, the American people want to cut the deficit, uh, but don't touch my Medicare, don't touch my Social Security. Yeah, I know all this, but the right. conversation, he, he's just gotten the conversation started. And of course we heard all the nonsense, all the really reprehensible demagoguery about uh, grandma over the cliff. It's all wrong, of course. Uh, in terms of either what Representative Ryan has suggested or the facts of life. Again, the enemies of Medicare and Social Security are those people who say, don't touch them, because they're not only going to uh, ruin those programs, they're going to ruin the American dream. So, Well, let me take you back to 2010, though, mm -hmm. the midterm election 2010, when the tables were turned mm -hmm. and the Democrats had made changes in Medicare as part of health care reform, as you know, savings in Medicare, and Republicans were out there on the campaign mm -hmm. trail saying they're going to hurt Granny, your phrase. Yeah. Um, same thing? Yeah. Well, uh, fair point. I did not think it was an especially proud moment uh, for our party. Um, I couldn't help but savor the turnabout being fair play after, <laughs> after decades of Democrats uh, ruthlessly misrepresenting Republican positions and uh, misleading people that somehow we can really afford these things exactly the way they are. It was only fair that they get a little dose of their own medicine. But no, I agree with you. Daniel says he would have tried to replace bickering with substance, but he never got that far, no matter who called right, to try ready. and persuade. Did your former boss, President Bush, try to get you to run? He was encouraging about it, but, uh, you know, so we're all... What do you say? People. What do you say? Well, that'd be between us, but uh, um, you know, I'll just... Uh, there were an awful lot of people I respect that, uh, uh, that approached me about it. If they hadn't, I never would have thought of such a fool notion at all. A foolish notion? Maybe. But what about a vice presidential bid? I asked, and he said it's improbable, and then told me it wasn't a very useful question. So was that a no? Not exactly. Quote, it's a definite non-answer, Daniel said. So there you have it. We'll be right back. What time did you get in last night? No.